This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, I'm going to discuss refractions. Refractions are different from reflections in that refractions occur with semi-transparent or transparent materials. For example, clear glass or water will create refractions. Refractions are bent light rays that, to the human brain, make it appear that certain things are distorted. For example, if you had a glass of water and you look through it, the background would appear distorted through that water because of refractivity. Light rays pass through the glass and through the water and change direction because materials are different from air. In that case, you can turn on refractions in Maya as an option. So let's say I want to go back to this glass, and this is saved out as glass.mb in the chapter 12 folder. Let's say I want to go back to this glass and make it more like clear glass, like a drinking glass. What I can do is increase this transparency and then activate refractions. So the first thing you need to do is go to the material for the glass, and in fact here it is right here, it's called glass underscore. You can see the red color here. I want to turn up transparency above black. Now, Lambert, Blinn, and Fong materials have a black transparency by default, and the black transparency basically means the surface is opaque. If I turn this up above black to, say, mid-gray, it's going to start to become semi-transparent. And here you go, semi-transparent glass. I saw my reflections, and in fact, the reflections get more busy because this glass is built out of a revolved curve, which means there's an outer surface and an inner surface. Therefore, the outer portion of the glass reflects, as does the inner surface. In that case, so I can see it is semi-transparent because the sphere is showing through, as is the backdrop. Right now, though, it looks a little like a piece of plastic. It doesn't really have a sense of glass. So let's go even further on the transparency. I want to turn off transparency to white, which is 100% transparency. At this point, the material is 100% transparent. So in fact, the only thing I'm seeing is a reflection and maybe the specular highlight. This is what happens with real clear glass. The real clear glass material in the real world, you'd only see the reflections and the refractions and maybe dirt smudges and things like that, but that's it. Everything else is not there. It's basically 100% transparent. So how do we make this glass more realistic? Well, we definitely need refractions. But in the meantime, I think I'll simplify the reflections just to make it easier to see. I'm gonna go down to my Ray trace options section of that material, make sure my reflection limit is low, and it is, and indeed here reflection limit is one, that means I only get one bounce per surface. That's good. If that was higher, I'd have an even busier result. Now one thing I can do for now is go to the sphere and turn off reflections on the sphere just to make it easier to see what's going on. So I'm gonna go back to the hypershade, go to the sphere material, which is called glass two, and turn its reflection limit down to zero. And here's a case where the reflection limit for each surface can be different. So if I turn that down to zero, the sphere stops reflecting. That makes it a little easier to see what's going on. So what we really need at this point is refraction. So I can go back to the red glass material. It's still red, I just can't see the red because it's 100% transparent. Go to that material's ray trace options and turn on refractions. It's right here at the top is a checkbox. As soon as you turn this on, that surface will start to refract. It'll start to bend the light rays as they go through the surface. Now, one trick here is, as long as refractive index is set to one, which is the next attribute, you're not gonna see any difference because refractive index is an index that tells the program how much the light rays are going to bend as they go through that surface. And in fact, a refractive index of one is the same as air. And air has very little, if any, distortion. Technically speaking, it's really a refractive index of a vacuum where there's nothing and there's no distortion of light rays. In that case, air is very close to one, so it's like the light rays are passing through the atmosphere and don't really bend. So even though refractions is on, the refractive index set to one, you're not going to see any distortion. So what I need to do is turn refractive index to some other value. Now, in fact, as a scientific term, what you can do is search online for lists of refractive indices. And there'll be certain numbers that relate to certain materials. For instance, clear glass would have a refractive index somewhere between 1.4 and 1.6. So let's say I set this to 1.5. Now if I re-render that, 
with refractions on and the non-1 refractive index of 1.5, I'll start to get refractions. And you'll see it'll change instantaneously. So now what I have is the majority of the glass is very clear and you're able to look through the glass and see the background. However, the edges, there's a high degree of distortion. That's because the light rays are bending as it goes through the glass, and that's seen more intensely near the edges. Of course, it's also based on the way the glass was constructed in terms of the way that nerve surface was revolved will affect that refraction. So in fact, the way you construct a model, the way you construct a surface will affect what the refractions look like. Now, the value you put into the refractive index, of course, does have a result. So let's say I lower the refractive index to the refractive index of water, which is 1.33. I'll get a slightly different result in the render. Or go even lower, 1.1. There's a result. Now, the closer you get to 1, the less distortion you're going to see. You can also go higher, so the high end of glass, like 1.6. There we go. Now, the view through the glass will change based on the camera view. So if I was to move the camera a little bit, the refractions would update based on that view. So right now we have the refractions, which is basically a distortion of the background, and reflections. So the reflections are fairly light right now because the reflectivity is fairly low. But the refractions are definitely visible. And if you look close, you can see that the sphere is distorted. So the edge of the sphere right here as seen through the glass, has a little bend in it. And of course, you see the checkered background distorted quite a bit, and that's what makes the busy pattern along the top edge, along the sides, along the bottom. That's a refraction of the black and white backdrop. Now, in order to make the glass as realistic as possible, you have to model as realistic as possible. I mentioned that affects the refractivity. So let's say you wanted to build a realistic water glass. What you have to do is match the model as closely as possible in terms of its dimension to the real glass in the real world, even to the point of using a grid to measure everything out. If I look closely at this model, I can't go to smooth shade at all because it'll disappear, but if I look closely at the model, it has a fairly thick lip to it, and that thickness will affect the refractivity. If I had a thinner lip, I'd get a different result. It also has a fairly wide base. You can see the bottom of the inner surface here and the bottom of the outer surface here, so the base of the glass is fairly thick. Again, that will affect the refractivity. So let's keep that in mind as you're building models. So right now I have a fairly thick glass, it's fairly thick walls, and therefore I get a fairly thick looking glass in terms of the render. So again, in terms of refractive index, clear glass tends to be somewhere between 1.4 and 1.6. So let's say return it to 1.4. There's a result. I can also do that to the sphere too. I can go to the sphere material, go to the hypershade here, go to this material, which is called glass two, turn on its refractions, set its refractive index to 1.4, go back up and make sure it has 100% transparency, and then render that. And because it's a spherical shape, I'll have an interesting result. So now the glass is refracting, it's 100% transparent. In fact, the background seen through that sphere is so distorted you can barely see the pattern on it. We're going to try different values of the refractive index to affect that. There's 1.2, you can see a little bit more of the checker there. Think of this as almost like a glass paperweight. A glass paperweight that might be solid glass distorts the background quite a bit. There's 1.1. I can also go below 1. Now, in the real world, in terms of scientific evaluation, you won't really see a refractive index below 1. However, you can go below 1 for stylistic results. So let's say I put 0.7 in here, 0 0.7. I'll be able to see more of the background. In fact, it almost feels like a glass-walled sphere in this case. So you can go below 1 just to give you an aesthetic result that pleases you. So let's say I put in 0.9. Try that. And now it's more obvious what's going on. You get a sense there might be a wall to this surface because you see where the background is tightly distorted along the edge. And the center is almost like a fisheye lens or 
peephole in the door you might look through. And that's point nine. So refractions combined with reflections go a long way to making surfaces look realistic. Any surface that might be transparent or semi-transparent. So if you want that, you have to activate ray tracing. Then you have to go to each material's refractions, activate that. Then make sure you pick a non-1 refractive index. 1 is like air. Numbers above 1 equate to real materials in the real world. We can also go below 1 for stylistic results.